Or what government analysts are calling a landslide victory. An acceptance speech is scheduled for 3 p.m. with newly elected President Charlie Sheen. Who will GMFC the introduces the Giganto, the ultimate sports utility vehicle. Uh, yeah, we got a hot one. Everybody at the ready. Brought to you by the makers of Mama's Pride. This is 30 seconds, folks. Okay. Oh my, all alone on a Friday night? What are you, some sort of reckler? Not to be a judgmentalist, but if I were you, I'd try to make a Conrad or two. But while we're waiting for that to happen, how about some instruction? Not a problem. This player has it down pat, ready to go. We're almost in places. Um, player one, it seems you're missing a pseudopod. I'm calling you T-Bone. Ten seconds. Bye, Curious. Hand tool check, please. Six. Yes. Five. Let's go to black. Three. Four. Taste the memory. Hi, I'm Cookie, and four out of five dentists agree I'm a great kisser. Listen, don't worry. I find that most people enjoy playing alone. And the wrong answer of the game is brought to you by Fistable Bowling Equipment, Inc. Bury yourself in your ball, right up to your wrist. Fistable Bowling Equipment. Okay, let's not waste any more time. First on the docket, Muppet Rabies. Considering their natural life cycles, which Muppet baby shouldn't have arms? Baby Fozzie, Baby Rolf, Baby Piggy, or Baby Kermit? Frogs are armless tadpoles during the early stages of their life cycles. So really, Baby Kermit shouldn't have any arms or legs. Or be able to talk, or sleep in a crib with a bear and a pig. Now that I think about it, there are a lot of problems with that show. And now, Girl Got Issues. If Joan of Arc revealed her visions on the Dr. Phil show, what would he tell her? Let's get real, you don't really want to kill your dad. Maybe the dragon you're really afraid of is you. Talking to saints is just one tool from the religious shed. Or, get your head out of the gutter. Allow me. Joan of Arc claimed to hear the voices of Saints Michael, Catherine, and Margaret, which persuaded her to save France from the English attempt at conquest in the 100 Years' War. But Dr. Phil only answers to one voice, and that's Oprah. No, her head wasn't in the gutter. And you know what else is never in the gutter? A one-hole fistable bowling ball! Just like the one you just won from Fistable Bowling Equipment, Inc. Because when life gives you a 7-10 split, you should fist it hard. Today's wrong answer of the game earns you 4,000 bucks. Enjoy! Here's a good one! All headbands on deck! If the CEO of Old Navy required his employees to refer to him as the highest naval officer rank, how should he be addressed? The captain of cargo pants, the master commander of mittens, the lieutenant commander of leggings, or the fleet admiral of fleece? In the naval hierarchy, the fleet admiral is the highest possible ranking. But that's just his day title. At home, he requires his family to refer to him as the semen of boxer shorts. Everybody quite drunk. Everybody quite drunk. Hey. Try this on for size. Intern Art History 101. And yep, it's a diss or dat. I'm gonna read off seven names. For each one, tell me if it's a video with over a quarter million views on YouTube or a painting by Renoir. If it's a YouTube video, press the square button. If it's a Renoir painting, press your circle button. Each one right gets you $300. But get one wrong, 300 bucks goes down the YouTube, and you've got 30 seconds to paint this picture. Okay, we're off. Woman in a rocking chair. Two young girls at the piano. Dog eats dinner. Great Lady Falls. Young 
Boy with the cat. History of dance. Nude on cushions. Not bad, I'll give you a couple of stars, but I'm not leaving a comment. Look, I dare you to find me a work of art in the Louvre that is better than a cat playing a piano. <laughs> I mean, it's a cat playing piano! <laughs> no, no, don't stop! Don't stop! <laughs> Where's the vibe, girl? Rock my world, girl. Ooh, yeah. Here's one I like to call It's in the Mole. If I wanted to whack one mole worth of moles during a game of whack a mole, how many would that be? 3.14159 moles, 8,000 moles, somewhere between 1 million and 1 million x squared moles, or about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd moles. One mole is a unit of measurement used in chemistry that is equal to Avogadro's number, which is roughly 602 followed by 21 zeros. That's a lot of moles. And whacking that many moles will win me 25.3 billion Dave and Buster's prize tickets, which is almost enough to win an ashtray and a comb. That'll bring an end to our first round. And you're in pretty good shape, for now. Don't forget, in round two, all the cash is doubled. Enough small talk. I call this one, Stop Eating Your Crayons. Which of these is not a Crayola crayon eating another Crayola crayon? An elephant eating a peanut, a manatee eating a salmon, a canary eating an inchworm, or a beaver eating macaroni and cheese? <laughs> Want to see the right answer? I kid you not, Crayola has 120 of what they call core colors. And six of them are manatee, salmon, canary, inchworm, beaver, and macaroni and cheese. There is no elephant or peanut. Some other actual Crayola colors I could have used. A timber wolf eating asparagus, a pink flamingo eating cotton candy, and a beaver eating macaroni and cheese. Wait, did I already mention that? <laughs> I guess I did. Oh well, I just wanted to be sure I mentioned a beaver eating macaroni and cheese. Well, let's beaver eating macaroni and cheese on to the next question. Question 7! Open wide for... My eyebrows are lettuce, and my gym teacher married me. Oh, man, I had another really bonkers dream last night. Oh, eating pizza and watching a movie before bed. Why can't I quit you? Anyway, in the dream, I figured out a way to live among my cats, mayonnaise, and poopsie by downloading my brain into a fake cat. I learned about and became a part of their cat culture. Meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. But then my mom attacked all of us and destroyed the giant tree where we all lived. Which is crazy because my mom really is a cat person. Anyway, what freaking movie was I watching last night that gave me such a weird dream? Watchmen, Avatar, Surrogates, or maybe Inside Man? Oh yeah, I was watching James Cameron's Avatar. Overall, it was a pretty amazing dream. I mean, I wouldn't award it best dream of the year or anything, but it was good. The part where I attached my ponytail to my cat was a little awkward, though. Poor didn't chicken is picking out a mate. Guess I'll marry eight. Coming up, who arted? Which of these classic toys would French artist George Seurat probably enjoy the most? Play-Doh, alphabet magnets, light bright, or etch-a-sketch? George Seurat is considered the father of pointillism, a painting technique using a combination of colored dots just like a light bright. 
And speaking of classic toys, Silly Putty is great if you want to counterfeit any works of art, except that they always come out in reverse and flesh-colored. Why not try Windows 7? Which musician could not use his or her name as a Windows file name? Kesha, Questlove, Will I Am, or Old Dirty Bastard? Windows file names cannot contain a less than, greater than, colon, double quotation mark, forward or backslash, vertical bar, asterisk, or question mark. So Questlove couldn't name a file with his name on a Windows computer. But he could just pick a different symbol. Well, almost any symbol. He couldn't be colon love. Let me never let me go. Here we have Hopscotch on the Rocks. Okay, take a moment to collect your thoughts. This next question is going to require some high-level mathematical thinking. What I'm about to ask you has puzzled humans for centuries. Ready? How many squares do you make when you play four square? Four, five, six, or eight? There are the four titular squares, of course. Then there's the one big square they make up together. I was going to ask how many squares there are in a tic-tac-toe board, but I didn't want to blow your mind. Step right up to the jack attack. When you see two clues that match, press the X button. 4,000 if you're right, but you'll lose 4,000 if you're wrong. And don't ever forget... Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. What does your P mean? My P is just perfect. Good luck. That's the game! Well, you really know your peas. I bet you never fell for the old ICUP trick. <laughs> ICUP. <laughs> you don't know Jack! Nice one, folks. Okay, Danny, let us know what we're doing. So, are you thinking you'd like to enrage in more Tom Flummery? We're not leaving this house, mister, until you brush your teeth. Arrgh, this is so stupid! Hey parents, newsflash. Brushing a teeth is lame. Drinking out of a keg is cool. Hi, I'm Al Grin, owner of Grin Toothpaste Kegs. And it's time to turn your kid's toothbrush and sand off into a toothbrush and keg stand. Hold on to the keg, Mark! Your father and I have got your legs! Brush! 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 Ha 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 ha! That looks like a great time. Go from a dud parent to a stud parent with these cool toothpaste kegs. Isn't it time you threw a party in your kid's mouth? Tap into a healthy smile with Grin Toothpaste Kegs. Morning, Ted. Oh, you look horrible. Rough night last night? You bet. It was Carol's and my anniversary, and we didn't get any sleep. <laughs> Sounds great. You'd think, but I don't know. Nighttime's just not the same as it used to be. Sounds like you need some nighttime putty. Nighttime whaty? Nighttime putty. It's just like regular putty, but for nighttime. Huh, how's it work? Here, I'll show you. See, because nighttime putty's made from a water-soluble, stain-proof plasticine polymer, I can mold it around this area here, or even back here, and up over this. 
for a fit that goes on smooth and stays secure all night long. I see. Whoa, what's that part for? <laughs> I thought you'd ask about that. Look, if I bend this back here and open this flap, ta-da! Oh my gosh, how'd that get in there? <laughs> Beats me. Wow, Dan, you sure know a lot about nighttime putty. Hey, my late night buddy is nighttime putty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 Dan. This Monday, catch the season six premiere of Farting with the Stars. And this season, we've got our most star-studded cast ever. C. Helen Hunt. Jim Caviezel. Leonard Nimoy. The guy from that one medical show. Mm -hmm. And the girl from that movie with the guy from Scrubs. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be big, it's gonna be hot, and it's not gonna smell good. It's Farting with the Stars, where the only thing louder will be the roar of the crowd. Monday at... Whoop, excuse me. Monday at 7. Be there. Celebrity Farts Impersonated. time on the Laugh Factory Radio stand-up special, it's visual comedian Rich Cooley. You ever walk into a restaurant and the waiter looks at you like this? And you go like this? <laughs> I told my mom I was single and she handed me this. Look at it! <laughs> if I ever own a poster shop, this is what I'm going to sell. Hoochie Mama! <laughs> That's next time on the Laugh Factory Radio stand-up special. Great party, Sarah. Oh, thanks. I've got to ask, though, what's with the mysterious box? Oh, that's a mysterious box from Mysterious Boxes Incorporated. What's in it? Honestly, I've always been a little too afraid to open it, but it makes a wonderful conversation piece. Do you mind if I open it? Well, why not? I've already led a pretty full life. Let's take a look. <laughs> oh. Oh. Huh. Demonstrators threw hot dogs, knockwurst, and kielbasa as the Prime Minister's motorcade passed by. This is a fun. Oh, yeah.